Hello, everyone. My name is Rusty Lee. I'm a field specialist in agronomy for MU Extension. And today I want to talk to you about some of the changes that are taking place in private pesticide applicator training. We have new regulations that went into effect January 1, 25, and we need to be aware of these changes. The Missouri Department of Agriculture is our lead regulatory agency for the state of Missouri. And MDA has been charged by the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, to meet some new federal guidelines and competency standards. And it's these competency standards and these federally mandated changes that we're going to go over now. So some of the major changes is just the increased competency standards. So the knowledge base has the, the expected understanding of restricted use pesticides has increased for our applicators. We also have some new minimum age requirements that have been established for our applicators. Record keeping is remaining the same for our private applicators, but there are some new record keeping requirements specific to pesticide dealers and commercial applicators. And we also have some new categories, some new areas of training for private pesticide applicators. One of the biggest changes right off the front is supervision. In the past, a person with the private pesticide applicator license could supervise, could hold the license, and others could make application of restricted use pesticide without having the license. That's no longer the case. It is now a requirement that anyone who uses a restricted use pesticide must hold the private applicator license. So now what is use, using a pesticide? So beyond making an application to an orchard or to a field is anyone that mixes the pesticide solution, anyone that helps load the sprayer in addition to making application, cleaning out the equipment, washing off the equipment, storing the pesticides, handling the partially empty containers, all of that is considered use, and all of that now requires holding this license. We have many multi-generational operations where maybe the person in the middle age bracket has a license, and then that grandparent level person helps out from time to time, and they didn't have a license, and they worked under the supervision of the one in the middle, or the one in the middle had the license and their child did not, and that child would work some in the summer under their supervision. This is what's gone away. There's no longer the ability to supervise someone using restricted use pesticides unless they have their own private applicator's license. So we have category 20, which is the general agricultural pest control. This is the only required training for your private applicator's license. This is the core material that we have taught every year in the past. But what we do have is we have three new categories. I mentioned the increased competency standards. So we now have a category 21. So if you're wanting to make application in a soil fumigation, that requires supplemental training beyond the core training. The same is for category 22, non-soil fumigation. An example of this would be grain storage on a farm. So if you want to fumigate a grain bin, this is an additional supplemental training that you would need. And then if one was to use a drone making an aerial restricted use pesticide application, you would need the category 23 training for aerial pest control. Now, in the past, we have had the requirement to receive the private applicator license that you be 18 years of age and a producer of agricultural commodity. That continues to be the case. But since we are now required for every person using the product to have the license, there was a provisional applicator permit created. And this allows a 16 or 17 year old person who is also an immediate family member of a licensed private applicator that they may get their provisional applicator's license. And so this will allow a person to only operate in category 20. 
So the general ag pest control, not fumigation or, or aerial. And they would attend the exact same training as the 18 year old. And it's just that their license would be provisional. They cannot purchase restricted use pesticides, but they may use, they may apply. And then the license, of course, is good for five years. And as that person reaches their 18th birthday, well, their license would transition automatically into a full-blown private applicator license, no longer with the provisional piece. Now, to get certified or recertified to renew your five-year license as it expires, we have three options. We will continue to have the in-person training. There's going to be online options. So, Canvas courses. This is where you can do it online from home, on demand. So anytime, 24-7 that you want to take this online course, you can do that. And then a third option is to pass an exam. Let me explain what this exam is about. You have the option to bypass in-person training, you bypass the online training, and you go straight to a testing center and you have a multiple choice exam that's created by MDA, administered by Pearson View. It's going to take you 60 minutes or less, and there's a testing fee of $45 with the testing center. Make a passing score, you receive your license. That's the end of it. There is no training program involved. You know, this is where you have the study materials on your own. You feel confident that you can go take an exam and pass it, and this is a test out option, I call it. So the MDA is administering that. So that leaves us with the first two, in-person and the Canvas course. So our in-person training is going to be the the two and a half hour program of the Category 20 core training, just as we've done in the past. And then we will have supplemental trainings. So soil fumigation, this is about a 50 minute process of additional training, non-soil fumigation, is another half hour worth of training. And then aerial application is an additional half hour of training. So depending on your location and, and how the field specialists are setting it up in your area, this may be at one event where you can pick and choose which portions and supplementals you need, or it may be just the core only and separate meetings scheduled for the supplemental trainings. More to come on that. The online Canvas course This is where you have the most flexibility. You'll be paying the fee. Private applicator license will now come with a $75 fee. That's a one-time fee for the five-year license, okay? And you can do this online with a credit card. Uh, There will no longer be the walk-in video watching at the county offices, but we can help facilitate your taking an online course at the county office with a laptop and internet access as may be required. One of the common questions I get is, my license hasn't expired yet. Do I need to do something today? No, if your license has not expired, you are grandfathered in to the supplemental training so you can continue to function with restricted use pesticides and including the soil fumigation and non-soil fumigation and even aerial application. The one piece that you are not grandfathered in is the supervision. Supervision is no longer an option for any of us. So as of January 1, any person using has to have the license. As your license expires, then you'll be attending the new training, meeting the new competency standards and the supplementals. But for now, you can enjoy those four all rolled under your existing license. If you have any additional questions, I would encourage you to reach out to your county extension office. Our office staff are going through a lot of training now to get up to speed on the process of PPAT I know January and February are busy times of the year to get these in-person trainings. We have lists of persons whose license is expiring, and you will continue to receive notification, as in the past, of the impending expiration of your license and some of your options for in-person trainings.